Hello again folks, I'm Barry with Barry's A-Track and Classic Car Radio Repair and today's demonstration is going to be on a unit out of a uh, uh, it's either a 70 or 71 Ford Torino Cobra Jet and uh, since uh, be, be the reason that I don't have this thing already set up and ready to go is because this customer has uh, indicated that he's going to sell this unit so I thought it would be nice to uh, let the uh, potential buyer see the inside of the unit and see what's all been done to it uh, this is a conversion job uh, this looks this unit appears identical to uh, the the same radio used in a 69 Mustang and, and a few other years so it should be good to go uh, for a Mustang owner as well and uh, on a conversion, all the original electronics come out. As you can see, there's a lot of open space in the radio. There's not much left in there. Uh, this is the uh, conversion module. Basically, it's a complete AM FM stereo radio with four separate 45 watt amplifiers. And uh, now, to get this massive increase in output power, it is necessary to uh, to rewire your speakers so that uh, each speaker has its own individual pair of wires with no commons, no no common grounds, uh, no grounded wires in the speaker system, and that's how you get that massive increase in output power. Uh, as I mentioned before, the original unit had two amplifiers, each capable of maybe four watts four or five watts now it has four separate amplifiers each delivering 45 watts so this is going to be a pretty uh, much more powerful unit than it was before now this here uh, this is something that you're only that you're only going to get at my shop uh, most other shops leave the original tape head preamp intact uh, from my experience the original tape head preamp sounds pretty dull and so I have designed a board that uh, brings out uh, brings out the treble on these old worn tapes and also the uh, the left and right outputs are individually adjustable on my preamp so we'll turn it over uh, this is a brand new motor that's standard procedure with uh, with any uh, with any Ford unit so we're going to turn her over for you and show you maybe a couple other cool things. Uh, this is the, uh, the the pulley for the new motor, a new belt of course. This is the new speed control board. Uh, the original speed control board did not allow you to adjust the motor speed. Motors can drift in speed over the years a little bit so uh, my, my uh, speed control board is adjustable and so that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much a, a, a good uh, summary of the work I do on these units. So let's go ahead and pop these covers on and we're going to plug her in and fire it up make sure everything works before we send her back to the customer. Just take me a few seconds to pop this lid back on here. Then we're, we're going to have a little fun. Got to try to keep in mind to stay out of the camera when I'm trying to do this so that you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm not always successful. We can back this off a little bit so you can get a little bit better view of what I'm doing here. I'm just going to pop this top cover on real quick. There we are. Okay. A couple of screws and we're ready to go. Okay. I'm going to run this puppy through the full gamut of testing. Make sure everything's working properly. All right, I'm gonna whip out my cool little stand. There's my cool stand. Set the radio up on the stand. Get our get our connector hookup. Needless to say, the customer's end of the connector. Here's uh, here's the end that the customer gets with the radio. This, of course, plugs into the radio, and then this wiring connects to this to the car wiring, speakers, power ground, and all that cool stuff. So. Let's get our antenna plugged in. Okay, and I think we're about we're about set to go here. Let's uh, zoom in on this radio a little bit more, about like that. Should be okay. Alrighty, turn our power on. Got everything set to go here. We will reschedule this. Sentence. Okay, we are set to FM at the moment. And uh, I'm going to do what I usually do. I'm going to run it all the way down the dial. Make sure we pick up a good 25, 30 FM stations. Uh, climate uh, keeps warming around the plus. Right after these important messages. And a witness to the watching. <laughs> hey, Flagstaff, here's a quick way you save money. Switch to Geico. Renters, oh. She longs to 
Okay, that's about 10 so far. Attention, funding. The effective fervent prayer. Your skin does a lot for you. There's 20. Or call 928-777-1. It takes equal justice under... What will it be? With you till 3 o'clock. Have you been watching... Driving the word... It's like the war... Here's 30. Okay, so we got the 30 FM stations, pretty good. And uh, the way that we switch between AM and FM uh, on an original AM radio is we turn it off and then right back on within about a half a second. So here we go. Off on. Okay, now we're on the AM band. And I usually get three AM stations in this area. Got an anti Trump bias. Knew that. Yeah, on America First. Okay, and there's our strong station. Studios. So about 3 a.m. stations. Okay, I'm going to turn it back on to FM just because I kind of like being on FM more. Uh, let's go ahead. Uh, let's go ahead and test the line inputs. Uh, or the aux input. I'm just going to feed a quick tone into the aux jacks. Make sure it switches over. There's the right side. There's the left side aux. Now, after using the aux input, after the signal's removed, it does take 20 seconds for the radio to come back on. Uh, that's because of a Vox circuit, VOX, a voice-operated switch that holds on to the aux signal a little longer than it really needs to, just to make sure we're not constantly switching back and forth between songs and during quiet music passages. If you don't like the delay, just turn the unit back off, turn it right back on, radio will come back on immediately. Okay, so there's the radio came back on by itself. Let's go ahead and do the final test. We got some Ann Murray. A little eight track tape. And the first thing you should notice is that it sounds a lot brighter than any other eight track. And that's because of my own special design tape head preamp. Switch tracks. Nice, bright, and crisp. On some tapes, newer tapes, it may be a little too bright. So. Just back off your tone control. And now it sounds more like an 8-track tape. Bring our treble back up. Okay, I'm going to switch tracks. Okay, going to pull our tape out. R radio does come back immediately after pulling the tape out. Okay, now we're, we're going to test the uh, the virtual balance and fader functions. Um, since this unit now powers up to four speakers, it's kind of nice to be able to shift between left and right and front and rear. So we can do that using just the tone control. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now. Let's bring our output level meters in the picture so we can see the results of our adjustments. Okay, there's our unit back in the upper left-hand corner. I'm going to give the tone control two turns to the right, and after that, you're going to hear either a voice prompt or a, or a set of four beeps, letting you know that you can now use that same control to adjust your, your front rear balance. So to adjust our fader, we're going to give our tone control two turns to the right. So here we go. Okay, there's our tones. Okay, and now this tone control is adjusting our front rear balance, rear only. Front only, rear only. I'm going to center the speakers. I'm going to take my hand off the control. And one beep lets us know that that setting has been saved. And this is once again just the tone control. OK, now we're going to adjust our left-right balance. Same procedure, except we turn our tone control to the left this time twice. So here we go. OK, it didn't catch that time. It can be tricky sometimes. Radio, Fun Oldies 97.9. Oh, never mind. This radio, this radio, since this radio has a balance control, we're not using the virtual balance control, so we'll just test the, the left right balance control instead. 
my mistake. Okay, so there's that. One of my old favorite oldies. Alrighty, so we're all done here. Uh, everything is working properly on the radio 8-track section. The line input works and everything else is working. So she's ready to go back to the customer. Let me get rid of these meters here so we can see my face again. Not that, much, not that many people really want to see my face. Okay, here we are. I'm Barry with Barry's 8-track and classic car radio up here. If you have an 8-track player, either for home or for car use, needless to say, you can reach me directly at 928-533-9666. And you've just seen what I can do with a, with a classic car AM radio with or without an 8-track. Uh, I can also add MP3, I'm sorry, uh, yes, MP3 input for like a wired aux like this one has. I can add Bluetooth, USB, and on some, radio, or on some radios, I can even double the number of FM station presets. So, my website is in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and listening, and we'll see you next time.